Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Nico, and I've got a game here for you that I played a couple hours of and I wanted to share it with you all. And although this isn't my type of game, I do still think it is a good game and still wanted to make a video on it and share it with you all because I can see this appealing to a large audience. And what I didn't like about it and what really kind of hindered my enjoyment are design choices. I wouldn't necessarily call them flaws, and I'll cover these things, but they were design choices they made, and they just don't suit my tastes. So it's real simple. I just don't think this game is for me. It might still be for you. So what this is, is it's an action platformer, and it has some roguelite elements. It has a pretty simple premise and that you go from planet to planet. There's like these three switches that you have to flick on and then you can access the boss of that area. There's also optional areas that you can find. There's like these big orb things that will give you an artifact which you can then use in a future run. You can't use it in the current run that you're on but for a future one. And then there's also challenge rooms and if you complete these they will give you an option between like two upgrades. And that's one thing about this game that I really didn't care for was the upgrades. They're very generic and bland, at least from the couple hours that I played of it and weren't anything spectacular. A few of them are like increase your fire rate or give you a double jump or a ground stomp, you know, things like that, make you invulnerable when you dash. Just very basic, nothing completely original from what I saw. And for the most part, you're just gonna run through these areas. You can melee with the Y button, you can shoot with the X button. I think most of the time you're gonna be shooting, so it felt weird to me control-wise that Y was melee and X was shoot. I felt like it should have been flip-flop. Because this felt more like a run and gun than like a beat em up or a melee combat style game. But, I don't know, that's the way they got it. And you can't change the controls, which was something that I didn't like. I feel like pretty much every single player game should have some sort of control customization. I don't really know why that's not a more common thing, but it's not an option here. The game's pretty hard, and... I think part of that for me, and this is a big component of it that is why this game is not personally for me, is I do not enjoy being pressured by time. I've mentioned this before in my videos, I don't like time trials, I don't like being pressured, where failure can come as a result of running out of time. I like to be a bit more methodical and take my time and, you know, thoughtfully move throughout a level and fully explore it and in this you have an oxygen meter which you can see in the upper left corner and you're always timed there are ways to refill a bit of this to give you more time but essentially when you're in a planet area you have to find the three switches defeat the boss collect whatever item comes after you defeat the boss and then you need to escape and you need to do all of this with just like a few minutes time so you are heavily pressured by time in this i would understand maybe if just like the evacuation phase after defeating the boss was timed but that's not the case and that is the key thing i just want to make it clear that's the key reason why i won't play more of this and why i'm not going to do a full review is after a whole bunch of tries multiple times of dying on a boss because i ran out of time like this just is not for me if you don't mind time and being pressured by time or if you actually like that then absolutely you're gonna have fun with this because the gameplay is pretty fun there's a lot of variety in the enemies the planets all seem to be different and unique in their own ways. Again, it's a bit generic in the roguelite area since the main way it's a roguelite is how it handles runs and how it handles the procedurally generated areas. 
but there's not a lot of progression that you're gonna make. So in order for you to progress in this, you need to get better as a player. It's not like a game like Hades where, yeah, it's hard in the beginning, but you're gonna constantly be getting currency and things like that, you fully upgrade your character, and then each run gets a little easier, a little easier, a little easier, till eventually you can overcome its challenges and beat it. This, you need to be on skill and skill alone. So if you're not learning from your mistakes in understanding enemy patterns and really getting a good handle on mobility and things like that, you're absolutely gonna struggle with this game and probably not care for it in the same way that I didn't. So just to recap, I don't like being timed and I didn't like the lack of permanent progression. So those are the main two things I didn't like. If you don't mind those, this game is pretty fun. The time that I spent with it, where I was just running through, blasting enemies, exploring a little bit, but quite quickly, the challenge rooms are pretty fun because the timer pauses there for your oxygen. The artifacts you can get are pretty cool. You'll get little story sequences, which had like these kind of neat looking little cutscenes. I did like the pixel art. The sound and music that kind of goes on in the background is very atmospheric and felt really great and appropriate for all the different planets that I did visit while I played. So this was a pretty cool and unique little game. It's just, it wasn't really for me. So I did want to highlight it. I hope you still enjoy this, even though it was more of a showcase than a review or a preview. And if this looked like something you would enjoy, you should check it out because it's pretty neat. So this was Astral Flux. It's available now on PC and Nintendo Switch. And thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you next time.